everyone so i am coming to do a review for uh, married at first sight season 11 episode 10. um this episode was pretty good um for the most part i would say that there were some things that kind of stuck out we're picking back up from the major issue that uh, miles the major offense that miles uh, made offense that miles made towards karen which was her, um, him writing on the the uh, refrigerator uh, or the calendar that he was going to have sex with his wife. So it picks up with um, Karen sleeping away from the apartment and sleeping in her place, and from what and basically him processing that and her processing that. Um, so. Uh, eventually she came back home and they talked about it. And I have notes here, so that's why I'm looking down. She came back home um, and he apologized, of course, if he made her feel unsafe, that wasn't his intention. You know, the things that he already does and explains himself over and over again that, and if she doesn't know by now that he is not a vicious or malicious type of person, I don't know what it's going to take. Um, but of course, you know, like always, he apologized. She apologized as well and then said that, you know, she is going to make more of an effort to be more affectionate towards him. So, you know, well, it's yet to be seen um, other than a few that kiss at the party. So we'll see what happens. But they they worked on it this episode. So I, um, I'll give... Karen slight kudos because they did try to work on it um, through going out and playing with Amelia and Bennett. They went to play this game called bo bocce ball. I've never heard of bocce ball, but they played bocce ball. And so uh, Bennett was like, so what is going to be the prize if, you know, whoever wins or throws this great, the throws the good um, shot in bocce ball. So they wager like kisses on various body parts. So he, so like kissed your knee. I think Amelia kissed Bennett's stomach. Um, like I think um, Karen, Miles kissed Karen's nose. So they're just doing like playful stuff. So it was, it was cute, you know, that they were out and they're having a good time. Um, and so Bennett and Amelia, they got a chance to chat after the game. And so Bennett was like, so do you guys feel married? And he was like, ish and you know they both pretty much agree that they feel married ish um he said you know I don't even know her favorite color I feel like that's something that I would know as um as a spouse so later that evening they talked about their favorite colors you know just light-hearted conversation afterwards her favorite color is red she's like I already know your favorite color your favorite color is blue so okay great um they both you know talked about like I guess shoes and things so just it was just a real generic light heart conversation now what I will give Karen credit for in terms of trying to amp up the physicality of the relationship is that she did take Miles to a yoga studio where it was like um, a massage sort of thing so he laid out like eyes closed and it was her job to, the, the instructor was like you know take off his socks and you know massage his feet and so what it was like with a hot towel or something so she was able to be in control of the touch part of it which hopefully will make her feel more able to express herself and be more in control of that aspect of the relationship and not feel so shied away from it I mean I don't want her to lose out on a guy that is not saying he's perfect, but just I don't want her to lose out on a guy as emotionally intelligent and sensitive as Miles just simply because she doesn't want to have conversations about or around sex. I think that's normal. You should have those conversations. So I gave I'll give Karen a little bit of credit towards the end because she did attempt to make a little bit more of an effort to you know, massage his feet. I think she massaged like his forehead, um, hands. So just like non-erogenous zones, just to kind of, and of course he loves it, 
because he's like, oh, she's touching me. I'm so excited. Um, so that went well. So I just, so that's pretty much kind of what the episode was like with Karen and Miles. So they had a pretty good episode. You know, I'm still not sure what the end result will be, but if they continue and if she continues to open up more, of course, he's going to be very receptive. I think that they could have a chance if she would just let her inhibitions of him being younger than her or, you know, whatever um, thing she had that felt that she felt was a barrier. If she just kind of let that go and just look at him for who he is and not for what she, her, um, you know, where her visions are of what a man is, then I think they have a chance of being okay. But time will tell. I don't know. Okay, so moving on. Um, so I'm going to talk about next Henry and Christina. So Henry and Christina, um, they went out with um, Woody and Amani to go eat crawfish. And uh, she, you know, mentioned that they um, they talked about going golfing. They talked about, uh, Henry talked about them going salsa dancing. Henry said, oh, that she was sexy whenever they went salsa dancing. And she said that, um, which was a first, if, like, she was shocked to hear it. The whole table was shocked to hear that because, you know, Henry is not a very communic communicative person, especially in terms of saying things like that. So they were shocked. I was shocked. Um, and so um, Amani and, and Henry kind of had a little sidebar conversation. And so she was like, you know, how are things going? How, you know, just kind of checking in. Which one thing I will say about Amani, I like Amani. I really, really do. But I will say I would like for her, and I know she's coming from a great place. She's, you know, caring and wanting every, the best for everybody. But I think I would want for her to not be so involved in the other couples and their progression because her and Woody's relationship is her and Woody's relationship. And because they had this instant connection, that's not the same for everybody. And I know that she's wanting to kind of encourage everyone to kind of like mingle and talk and get to know each other. And that's admirable. But at the same time, um, you know, you know what I'm saying? It can kind of, it can kind of make, um, others seem like you're too into their business when you need to be focused on your own business because Woody has already said how he's feeling about you and so you need to work on like identifying your feelings for him as opposed to worrying about other people and their feelings but like I say I love her I think she's amazing it's just that that's kind of a takeaway I would say is just you know you can say how are things going but you know, we're in, but just leave it like that, you know, focus on you. Okay. So anyway, back to Henry. So she, Amani talked to Henry, was like, how are things going? He was saying that, you know, um, the impatience that Christina exhibited, uh, with production and, you know, if he were to make a decision or if he were to, you know, base his decision off of the impatience, it would be like a 0% chance. And so, um, Amani shared that with Christina because she asked Amani, like, how did, you know, I see y'all were talking. How did things go? What did y'all talk about? And she shared with um, Christina that, you know, Henry was turned off by her impatience. And she, and, you know, she was kind of like, well, why didn't he tell me that? Which, I mean, he kind of did allude to it, but not as forthcoming as he was with Amani. It just being kind of straight, open and honest, saying, hey, your attitude is a huge turnoff. If I were to base my decision, it would be a no. Just based, but things, you know, are, you know, I guess as of going golfing and dancing, things have been getting a little bit better. But if he were to just kind of give an overall, he's not really that. It's not a go for him. Um, so naturally, Christina was not happy to hear that, hey, you're telling Amani things that you could have been telling me or you could have voiced, you know, just like you're saying to the group that you thought I, I was sexy with the dancing. You never told me that, you know. So I understand that whole bit. Uh, and so Christina, of course, asked if he saw a future with her face to face and he said no, but he's willing to try. And I mean, that's kind of 
And Christina was just kind of like, okay, if, um, you know, Christina was like, well, look, I just want you to not feel like you can't talk to me because we are married. We are in a relationship. You know, you shouldn't feel like, you know, you not being forthcoming is a turn off to me. And I thought that that was good. I mean, she did over talk him when he was trying to explain himself, but that's just kind of how she is. I guess we can blame it on the ADD. I don't know. I'm not going to blame that on the ADD, but, um, so she encouraged him to just communicate and not dance around issues. So we'll see what the next episode brings, but, um, I don't know. I just feel like Henry went into it uh, completely for the wrong reasons and people do you, we've seen these seasons before. So I think that if he knew that he had an issue with opening up or being, um, communicating, eye contact, those things that, you know, can matter in relationships. If you know that you have an issue with that, I mean, I wish you would have expressed to Christina, uh, you know, and talk, you know, talk, talk to your, your partner who you're with. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know about them too. I think I see that Christina in this episode before finding out about him telling Amani that, you know, it would have been a 0% chance just based upon her impatience alone, but that, you know, things are starting to get a little better. So we'll just kind of see what happens. Um, you know, I just, I think that it, it just, um, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I think that Henry needs some probably work on maybe meeting someone more along his pace maybe someone quiet like he is or something I, I don't know what to say and then Christina I know she wants someone who's a little more in her in your face a little more boisterous and you know Henry's not going to change overnight and Christina's not going to change who she is overnight and I doubt they're going to just magically change by the end of this um experiment so I don't know we'll see maybe they can end things on a friendship note that's really my optimism my optimism with them so moving right along Woody and Imani um they just had a conversation uh that morning about parenting which was a com you know which is a good thing to have so Imani had mentioned that when she grew up she never got spankings or any kind of like corporal what she called corporal punishment Woody said well I grew up I I did I got spankings and she was like well if you know you can't spank if we have kids you know you can't spank them or, you know, it's like, if you whip them, I'm going to whip you kind of thing. Um, definitely against it. Because she was like, well, you teach. You have students. You don't whip your students if they don't listen. Um, and, you know, you work with them without having to do that corporal style punishment, which he had never really thought about. He's like, you're right. I, you know, it's kind of like I, I don't spank my students. And I am able to get them to stay on task and to listen. So she was like, you know treat your child the same way the same um way that you would treat a student in the means of getting them to listen and focus and everything that you don't have to go that route so i think that was the first time that he'd ever thought of of that as an option um and so i think that if they were to ever have kids that would be a point of contention especially if he slips up and does like a little and she sees it I think that 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 could that could be a huge a huge rift. So I'm hoping that they can um, come to a agreement when the time comes on how to discipline effectively without getting physical. You know, so I I think that that maybe they could work that out. Um. So also, um, they went out to dinner and stuff. And so he asked her, hey, does me telling you I love you put pressure on you? Which I thought was so nice of him to really say because as opposed to just saying, hey, this is how I feel. Do you feel the same way about me? He was more like, how do you feel about how I feel about you? And so she said, in some ways, I do feel like there's some pressure. In some ways, I don't um, because I have to realize like, how am I feeling about him? Like, I don't want his feelings for me to change just because I may not be at that exact um, moment yet. So, but I, I, I don't want you to, to fall out of love. So, um, 
And let me see. Oh, and he said something about them being, you know, he came something and I miss, I, I did miss a little bit of that part, but he came to the conclusion of, of course, them being in a relationship, being married, it's not something that you can just walk out on. And she was like, you know, why, why couldn't I? And he was like, well, you got to file papers, you got to do this. And he's like, well, what if I was something I wanted to do? So he just was like, like, they ended it and he was like, like, nah, like, I don't know, you know, kind of like, kind of brushed it off. So they ended up laughing it off. I think her point was that if I, if the end of the time comes and I felt like I no longer want to be with you, I should have that right to be able to separate. But if things are going well, why would you even bring that up? So, mm, uh, okay. So next up is, um, oh, Olivia and Brett, they did something that he liked to do, which was the indoor rock climbing. So he liked it. That was fine. They had a decent time with it. Um, so then they went to do something that she liked to do, which was go and hang out with her friends and play this trivia. And Brett was just not into it. He was like, this isn't trivia. Whatever the question was asked, it was like, um, unscramble the word and some other little questions. And he just checked out. He was just like, this is not trivia. So he's just sitting there drinking his beer, being, you know, a bump on the log. And so Olivia walked out with like her cousin or her friend or something. And, you know, it was just kind of like, man, just kind of lamenting about how I'm ex hope you know, thought us coming out doing this. Cause I heard, I knew that you like, you were a smart guy. Like I thought just telling her, her friend or cousin, I can't remember about that, thinking that he would be enjoying the time and he, you know, being Brett, he's like, I don't like it. And you just kind of shut down. So I really didn't write too much on them because I feel like Olivia's just tick tock goes the clock waiting for this to end because she's she knows hey I, we're not agreeing on finances we're not agreeing on activities things I try to do like the little swamp tour or the trivia game you're not into and you know I didn't write too much on them because it's pretty much the same like they were last week stagnant um, that's that. So Bennett and Amelia, um, let me see. Oh, Bennett did something nice. He cooked dinner for Amelia to say thank you for taking care of him when he was sick. I think he had Corona, but, um, that's, that's just my suspicion. Just given the season that we're in and that they were in New Orleans around the, I want to say they might've filmed this in February cause we're still a little cool, a little crisp outside. And I was in New Orleans in February for Mardi Gras. I came back home sick. Now, I didn't have corona. I had strep throat. But as soon as I got back to to home and went to the doctor, I, and they told me why well, I tested positive for strep, I was like, whew, thank you, Lord. Because, I, I mean, I dodged a bullet. I was in a crowded space, indoors, lots of people. I mean, yeah, so I don't know if he had Corona, but he might have had Corona. Anyway, so he cooked to say thank you. Um, so he had some friends come over. Um, I really, he had some friends come over. I wish I had the picture. I'm not an editing person, so if someone can share some good editing tools, please let me know. But he had some friends come on. One was dressed like a little artistic mummy. Like she had something over her head and completely covered like the only thing you could see was her face and then her other little friend came dressed like a ram he had like this little the other little friend had a little twisted ram thing going on they sang a song for amelia um and she loved it as expected uh so bennett's the so i think um i think amelia might have asked um Oh, how I guess if a scale of zero being a stranger and like 10 being madly in love, like where would you fall? And I think he's like, oh, I'm kind of like on the scale of like, um, oh, I'm sorry. Bennett said this question on a scale of stranger to madly in love. He's kind of like in that warm, snuggly place. So I guess it's kind of like he's warming up to the love, like he's loving what he's seeing so far. 
Um, then they go bike riding and they talk about pet peeve. So Bennett's pet peeve has been Amelia's cleaning. So Amelia says that she, oh, Bennett told her, hey, you know, when you wash dishes, can you clean the outside of the glass too? You, 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 mean, you mean to tell me you want to clean one inside the glass? So if I come over to y'all's house, I'm drinking out of a nasty glass. She was like, oh, okay. You know, they even, um, Bennett even came up with this little uh, draft of chores. So he got note cards and cut them up and was like, pick out the ones you like. I'm getting a little out of order, but they, but um, <laughs> she was picking all the ones like, go check the mail, answer the, answer the door. She ain't trying to do no, no housework. So, you know, maybe because she'll be a, you know, she's a doctor and maybe they can, uh, compromise on a nice, maybe a housekeeping service to come in once, twice a week or something. Cause I don't want Bennett to feel burnt out because he's not, he didn't really necessarily sound to be a house husband. He thought he would have a little bit of a partnership, but I can see now that Amelia is not into doing any laundry, any dishes, nothing, nothing. Okay. Um, so Bennett on the, uh, they talk, they were talking, um, they went bike riding, they talked about pet peeves. That was his pet peeve. Like I said about the cleaning, he asked Amelia, like, what are your pet peeves? She was like, I don't have any, nothing, nothing. He was like, well, um, you know, I may pick my nose. Oh, that's fine. I may forget deodorant. Oh, that's okay. Like everything that he named that could be, I mean, oh, I, I'm clear my throat and make this noise when I clear my throat. Okay, that's wonderful. It was irritating him that she did not find anything irritating about him. So I and I guess he's maybe that that I guess he feels like that's not really realistic. Like there's something that has to irritate you about me, but she didn't say anything. So last on my list, um, Woody and Miles, they go to get haircuts. Woody said um that he had told Imani that he loved her. Miles said if I told that way, if I told her that I loved her, she would walk out the door. And Woody was just floored. I forgot I'm sorry I forgot to add that part earlier about Woody and Miles. Um that she would walk out the door. That Karen would walk out the door if, if Miles said, Hey, I love you. Because he already knows she is not about that uh, emotional life. Um so um he said, you know, if Imani would have left, if I after saying, I guess, or writing something on the board like he did, he would have been blowing her phone up and stuff. So, I mean, different strokes for different folks. But I think that together their friendship is strong and that they can use each other as a resource. And I was glad to see them get together and talk as friends because they, they hadn't been doing a lot of stuff together, just them two. So it was good to kind of have, they went to go get haircuts together and just kind of have that male bonding time amongst friends. So tell me your thoughts. I have, I really... I know that I've heard through the grapevine that out of the couples, three stay together. I'm not sure about the Karen and Miles. I'm not, I mean, we'll see. What are y'all's thoughts? But drop down what are your thoughts about this episode and we'll talk later. Bye.